Steve Feiner, is a professor of computer science at Columbia University. He directs the Computer Graphics and User Interface Lab and co-directs the Columbia Vision and Graphics Center. Um, he's been doing this for a couple of decades now and um, uh, developed the first mobile, am I saying this right, the first mo mobile AR system. Um, Oh, uh, with see-through display, and, okay. Uh, GPS and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and, he, and, he's, and he's won more awards from three and four letter acronym organizations than I could count, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and get started here. Steve Feiner. I'm not sure if the, mi oh, the microphone is on, great, okay. So I'm gonna talk about my take on augmented reality for task assistance. And uh, as uh, Chris alluded to, we've been doing work in my lab on AR for quite a long time. Our first work on task assistance was back in 1991. You're seeing my then PhD student Blair McIntyre and in the inset uh, what he's uh, seeing through this optical see-through display with a one big deep <laughs> red scale a reflection technology private eye being reflected off of a little mirror beam splitter. And a couple of other things uh, progressively later and later in the history of stuff that we've done in my lab. Um, so just to give that very, very brief um, historical context, what I wanted to do is to jump ahead a bit to around 2009, talk a bit about work um, starting in 2000, actually a little bit before that, uh, but uh, work that uh, my then PhD student Steve Henderson uh, did with me on a system called Armor, Augmented Reality for Maintenance and Repair, and uh, that work was first published um, in a ISMAR uh, conference proceedings in 2009. And then a bit later, we did some work on that I'll take a little bit more time talking about that was on an aspect of uh, AR for maintenance and repair that we refer to as workpiece task assistance. And this is the idea of getting you, once you've figured out what it is that you want to work on and where it is, getting you to actually perform some task with uh, these uh, parts uh, of the task environment. So this is an ISMAR 2011 paper. And I'll first show you an example of using the system that uh, Steve built um, of doing this. This is a shot through a video see-through uh, head-worn display, and it's basically uh, showing um, a person using the system to locate a particular combustion chamber that's part of a uh, Rolls-Royce Dart 510 turboprop engine that we conveniently happen to have sitting in our lab that we use as a test domain. And so what you're going to see in this very quickly uh, running video is live view basically through the video see-through display of a person being instructed to find a particular combustion chamber, pick it up, orient it the right way, and insert it into the engine which is waiting to receive it as it's being reassembled. So you're seeing this little red arrow pointing to where the combustion chamber is. Um, we're tracking the head of the user, position and orientation. And we're tracking relative to the head with these markers that have been uh, emblazoned around the outside of the combustion chamber. Um, and the markers are telling the system, well, you need to turn it, uh, as you're seeing it being turned. There's now a little placard, which is uh, virtually overlaid on it. And that's going to get us to orient this so we can actually read it. And now it's in the right orientation that we can insert it into the part of the engine where it needs to go. And here you're seeing a little highlighted uh, see-through representation of uh, the uh, combustion chamber and where it needs to be placed into the engine. And so, gee, it looks like somehow my video is fine here, but it's getting cut off in the screen at the top over there. I'm not quite sure. There's probably something that the uh, video folks can do. Unplug it and plug it back in, OK? That sounds like what a computer scientist would say. Um, <laughs> So I've unplugged it and plugged it back in, and that actually means I'm now seeing nothing at all, okay? Let's go to this, which seems to think it's not connected, hit duplicate, and hopefully you now see it up on the screen. There we go, good. That's what you should be seeing over there. Okay, so let's move from that and let us move on to talking about uh, what I just showed you. It probably looks pretty cool. And we're all AR folks. We all believe that's wonderful. Wow, AR documentation. So the question is, well, is this really better than conventional documentation? 
Nowadays, conventional documentation, at least state-of-the-art stuff, is done with computers. And so we're going to ask the question, as we did back then in this paper, um, is AR better than conventional computer documentation? And the task we decided to do this for was one that involved assembling the combustion chamber, which has two major pieces, a bottom part that you can see at the upper left, a top part that you can see at the lower left. Put those two together, you get uh, a top on top of the bottom, but it has to be oriented correctly. There's 20 holes around the flange that the top and bottom share. We've got three tops, we've got three bottoms, we've got a little Lazy Susan you're going to stack them on. We've got the optical see-through head, it's an NVIS ST60, uh, optical see-through head-worn display that we're using over there. Um, a little button at the lower right to go and start and stop uh, the study. Um, and we're tracking all of these pieces using a natural point OptiTrack mocap system in which there's a unique configuration of retroreflective spheres on each one of the pieces so the overhead cameras that are part of the system know exactly or pretty close to exactly um, the position and orientation in 3D of each one of those pieces along with the head of the person whose head-worn display is being tracked. So, but not altogether, we do a study. Our study is what's called within subject. That means that each one of the subjects tries both the AR condition and as well what we call the LCD condition, a computer driving a big LCD panel with, I think, uh, I'm uh, proud to say, very nicely done, um, better than your typical um, uh, computer-based uh, documentation. We counterbalance the star condition, that is to say each subject started either with AR or LCD, half with one, half with the other. We randomized which chamber bottom and which top they needed to pick up from those bins, which pairs of holes they needed to match up. And to make a long story short, let me quickly tell you about the AR condition. There is our subject wearing this ridiculous, heavy, unwieldy uh, display. And later on, we're going to ask questions like, did you prefer this or not having to wear this thing? And it turns out that, of course, you'd prefer not to wear it, but they actually really overwhelmingly preferred the kind of documentation they got wearing this rather uncomfortable thing. Uh, so what did they actually see? I'll show you very quickly a couple of stills to go and sort of situate you as to what you're going to see overlaid in the video, and then I'll show you some live video. So you're going to see some uh, highlights, um, yellow highlights you're seeing on the left indicating the source and destination of where a top or bottom is supposed to go. Some motion paths, a little blue sort of uh, uh, spline curves indicating an approximate ideal path for how a top or bottom is supposed to move. Um, when the top gets put on the bottom of the system, because it's tracking everything in terms of its position and orientation, we can move you automatically onto the next uh, subtask. And so here, when the top goes on the bottom, you're seeing some overlaid information telling you a, a lettered uh, 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 call out for the particular hole at the top that lines up with the numbered call out for the particular hole at the bottom a little arrow giving you the direction to turn, the length of the arrow, color of the arrow means how much to turn. Longer in red is longer to turn than shorter and green, for example. And there's some text at the top over there telling you exactly what to do. Um, here's a little close-up uh, showing you the green arrow with little highlights around the holes that have to line up. And the highlights fuse when you line them up by turning the top end or bottom. And then you put in a screw in our study. Normally there would be 20 bolts, but AR is really not going to help with that. And so in our case, there were two screws that you had to put in in the study. So let me quickly show you what this looks like. Um, this is shot through an optical see-through head-worn display. And the way we did that is because I did not want to put a camera in my student's uh, eye. We have a dummy head, uh, fiberglass head, with a camera embedded inside of its eye socket. It wears the head-worn display. One student is holding the head and moving it as if it were their own. Another student is reaching around and actually doing the task. That's obviously not what we did in the study, but it, it's what we did to bring you the video that I'm about to show you. So here we start the study, and your little arrow points to where you need to go. So there's the bottom highlighted that you need to pick up. We're really, um, I think, doing overkill, nearly everything with the kitchen sink in terms of the overlays. And that's an issue, I think, that needs to be addressed in, in future work to minimize all that clutter. Uh, here we've got the top piece. And if it's the wrong piece, the system will not let you proceed. Put the top piece on. When it's close enough, you now see the arrow indicating how things need to get turned. And you see the letter and number that need to get lined up. You line them up, they'll ultimately disappear. And then we put in um, 
one of those pins over there and put in another pin and when we're done we're going to go and hit that button over there and we compared that kind of documentation with stuff done in the as i called it the lcd condition here the, the subject's head is being tracked but with a very lightweight headband they're not looking through anything other than their own eyes or their glasses if they're wearing any and they're seeing that flat panel whose top textual instructions are actually being cut off over there so in our study we had 22 participants um, I won't bore you with the low-level demographics over here, which you can read on the screen. Um, we start with an introduction. We gave people a stereo vision test. We had, as I said, two different conditions. Each one had a little instructional video to try to minimize the variation in what we told the uh, uh, subjects in the experiment. Um, and we had a post hoc questionnaire in which we asked questions, so-called Likert scale questions, you know, rate from one through five of your experience. And uh, coming up with a set of hypotheses from an earlier pilot, we're able to show with the results from the study that AR was faster for the alignment and pinning, nearly very close to being half the amount of time of doing this with the more classical documentation, more accurate, looking uh, as to whether things are aligned within a half hole width, uh, significantly more accurate than the more classical documentation. And the questionnaire, people overwhelmingly preferred uh, AR over the a classical documentation and thought it was more intuitive. Now, one thing I'm going to just touch on before the end of my talk, and that's that we have since moved on to looking at not just a single person, but multiple people working together, uh, both co-located and as well also remote. So there's a very classic uh, uh, configuration um, in which you might have a remote expert remote subject matter expert, advising a local technician who might have less expertise, but they're really actually there in the field. And so we're looking at different ways of being able to help the technician, courtesy of things being done by the remote expert, get to the right place in what might be a complicated task environment, look in the right direction, and attend to the right component that the expert wants them to look at. And so these are a couple of uh, stills from some of the work that we're doing. Um, you're seeing in the lower left-hand corner the subject matter expert's view. In this case, a little scale model of uh, this particular engine. They're pointing at a little representation of uh, where the uh, view is supposed to be from, from the standpoint of the technician. And the technician is actually seeing in their environment this big sort of uh, picture frame. And the idea is they get their head in there, and then they're looking in roughly the right direction. And then there's additional things we do to go and get the um, technician to attend to the right stuff. So at this point, I'm going to hopefully have a little time to take questions. I want to acknowledge the uh, colleagues, students, and faculty members who worked on this project with me, the various folks um, at the Marines who funded this, um, and as well to mention for those of you interested in AR research, um, ISMAR 2013 is October 1st to 4th in Adelaide, Australia. And I hope you can all uh, join us there. And maybe I have a minute or two left over for questions. OK. We had, we had actually discussed having all the questions at the end of the panel to make uh, sure we get through all the questions. OK, that's all fine, because that's yeah. Okay. You yeah. Know, when I talked to Ori, he had said do them oh. after. But oh, you're, you're in charge. OK. 